we have the new D5500 and we're gonna test it against all the closest competitors, the D3300, the Canon 70D, and we're gonna throw it in mirrorless, the Sony Alpha 6000. One of the things you do a lot in the studio is just make sure everything is sharp. Touchscreens are great for that. Look at the quickly, I can zoom right in on the eye. If there are multiple people in the photo, I could quickly pan between each of them. So I love that touchscreen. Now I'll hand it over to you, Charles. So, so far I like that the autofocusing points are really easy to change, which makes it easy to recompose your image very quickly. It also snaps into focus really fast. Another thing I like is that the live view is right where your thumb is, so it's easy to snap it into live view. Tony, you love live view. D3300, the controls are about the same, feels about the same, in fact, it's about the same way. It's a little bit cheaper, takes the same pictures, but right away I'm noticing that the focusing points just aren't the same. There aren't as many of them. They aren't spread around the frame as much. Not a big deal in the studio. Just means I have to do a little focus recompose. Definitely slows down the shooting process a little bit. No touch screen, so as I zoom in here, I have to just kind of keep manually pushing it and then panning around with the buttons and then zooming in closer and, oh, sure enough, it actually missed focus on this one, so I'll have to retake it. Right away I noticed that there are far fewer focusing points, just like Tony said. Um, and the controls don't feel as nice to me. They're not placed in a way that's as pleasing as the last camera. Small nitpicky type things, but it matters. You pick it up and you notice. So this is the Canon 70D. It's $1,100, making it $200 more than the D5500. They both have the articulating touch screen. And let me take some pictures of Tony and see if it feels as nice. It's fast, easy to change the autofocusing points. Uh, it just feels good in the hand. Unlike the D5500, it has an LCD screen on the top and a second dial on the back. The D5500 definitely has the better image quality, but this seems to feel even better. It's just a bigger camera. It feels more solid, so when you're in the studio and not traveling around, that's gonna help you out. I like having the LCD screen on top, personally. I can see my settings a little bit quicker, but it's not a big deal to use the one on the back. On the Nikon, you have to hold two buttons down to change like your aperture when you're in manual mode. Here you can just use this dial on the back. Nice to have, not needs to have. This is the Sony Alpha 6000. It's actually cheaper than the D5500, way, way smaller, and it has the same great image quality. Let's check out how it works in the studio. Whoa, frame rate's a lot faster, isn't it? Writing to memory card, unable to operate. Ah, it has to wait until it finishes writing everything before it will let me review the pictures, and that is real annoying. No touch screen on this, so I have to hit the magnify button and then kind of zoom in. I'm noticing on a lot of these shots, it's focusing on her hair or her nose or her forehead and not the eye. I'll change the focusing point so it's not selecting it automatically. It was detecting her face, but picking a point kind of randomly. So I'll try the small spot so I can pinpoint it right on her eye. Did you know I could stand like Paul Reiser? Remember him? What? <laughs> oh, it's hunting. Okay, look, I'll just put this on 
live view so you can see it happen in real time. But with the small focusing point, look, watch as I try to focus it in. Okay, there it goes. But look, okay, now refocus again. It randomly takes from a short amount of time to more than a full second. That's how long it took to focus. Here you go, Charles. Damn. So the frame rate is incredibly fast and you can put your focusing point almost anywhere in the frame, which is really nice. The camera's lightweight, um, but there's some things that I don't like about it. The buttons are so flush. I trimmed my nails specifically to work with small cameras like this because they were getting in the way of my reviews and still I'm fumbling around. I like a button I can feel that works right away and they're just not as responsive. So is it a huge letdown? No, but for me, it's a noticeable difference and I don't like it. I do like that you can review your pictures through the electronic viewfinder. The pictures look nicer because you don't have the light bouncing off of the screen and it means you don't have to take your eye away from the viewfinder to review your pictures. When comparing costs, be sure to factor in lenses. The Sony 7200 f4 is $1,500, the Canon's is $1,300, and the Nikon's is $1,200. While the Alpha 6000 is $200 cheaper than the D5500, it's $100 more expensive once you buy this lens. Canon and Nikon also have less expensive third-party options from Tamron and Sigma, which aren't available natively for the Sony. The Sigma 7200 F2.8 is $1,200, $300 cheaper than the Sony, and it gathers twice the light, giving you background blur and letting you use a lower ISO on your Canon or Nikon camera. In the studio, most people would never notice the difference in image quality between these cameras. However, we often raise the shadows to bring out texture and dark hair. And when we do this, the 70D shows noise that would be visible in a large print. Though the Alpha 6000 had better image quality than the 70D, the focusing was slower and less accurate than the DSLRs, putting it in last place. The D5500 won this one thanks to the touchscreen and focusing points. So next, we're going to see how each camera performs with landscape photography. So Connecticut isn't really known for its landscape photography, but we do have a lot of beautiful historic buildings. This one in particular, Seaside, is a bit dilapidated, but we're gonna play tourist anyway and take some pictures like it's our first time here and see what we can get. It's not a huge weight difference between the D5500 and D3300. Even though the D3300 is smaller in the hand, they just made it out of some amazing new science materials that make it super portable. What about the A6000 though? That is tiny by comparison. Yeah, hold that thing up. It's just really small and lightweight. And for travel, man, you never mind carrying that A6000 around. Yeah, but the 7DD is like the monster of the group. If you wanted a small camera to travel with this, well, it's a typical DSLR, it's big. But the small camera that you have with you is the one you're most likely to take pictures with. So if you don't feel like toting this thing around, you might not get your shot. Yep. Bright white snow, some deep shadows in the building. This is a perfect opportunity for bracketing and then later using HDR and post-processing. One problem, of all these cameras, only the D3300 doesn't have bracketing. So I can manually adjust the exposure compensation to take multiple different shots of different exposures, but when you do that, it moves the camera on a little bit, makes everything align a little bit worse in HDR, and just generally takes longer. If you need bracketing, you're gonna have to bump up to the D5500 or one of these other bodies. Oh my gosh, Mother just Nature just like intensified. The, <laughs> the snow just blasted. We were like, well, let's just do this one more shot, and then Mother Nature was like, Fuck you! <laughs> Thank you. 
I like to use the tilt screen to get low to the ground and compose my pictures, but with live view on this thing, I can't tilt the screen out and it's almost impossible to see. So if I had this camera and only this camera, I'd have to be laying in the snow. Tilt screens are really nice. I'm out. The Alpha 6000, D3300, and D5500 all had similar image quality, but we're naming the Alpha 6000 the winner because of the small size and electronic viewfinder that lets us preview the exposure before we shoot. The D5500 comes in a close second. It's amazingly lightweight for a DSLR, and we love the articulating touchscreen. The Canon comes in last because it's heavier and has lower image quality, though most people will never notice. Here are my favorite soccer player to test out the focusing systems on each of the four cameras. So uh, let's get started. We're gonna use the same settings and a big 7200 for all of them. Head on down. This is the D3300. I've designed this test to stress every camera's focusing system. So she's walking directly towards me. That's when the focusing system has to do more work. It doesn't do any work when you're going side to side. And also because she's at close range, it's doing exponentially more work than if she were far away. Thank you. 70D here. Notice we're using a long lens, fast lens. We're shooting at f4 and everything at ISO 12,800, which is kind of the circumstances you have to shoot at in these indoor gyms. That's what makes it so challenging. That's why the number one complaint we get is my camera does terrible with indoor sports. So we really want to test these out and see which one is the best. Okay, go. Thank you. Now the mirrorless, the A6000. By the way, this is an objective test, but I've shot many, many hours of Madeline shooting soccer in real world environments with all of these different cameras. So I have my own uh, real world experience with them too. One thing that annoys me about the Sony is it doesn't let me view my pictures until after it's finished writing all of them. There we go. There, you can see a whole sequence of Madeline out of focus. So you probably get more shots in focus than I do, but it's not because I don't know how to use the cameras, it's because I've designed a test that pushes them past their limits, because that's the only way to really know which is the best. The Canon 70D averaged 23 sharp shots per run, while the D3300, D5500, and Alpha 6000 each got about 14 shots per run. Having more focusing points spread wider throughout the frame makes the D5500 a better choice for sports than the D3300. Despite the similar score, the Alpha 6000 focused very differently from the DSLRs. It captures 11 pictures a second, much faster than the DSLRs, but only one out of three shots are in focus in these challenging conditions. The DSLRs took fewer shots, but got over 90% sharp. In the real world, I've found the Alpha 6000 takes much longer to initially lock focus than the DSLRs, causing me to miss important moments when shooting sports. You can get it done with an Alpha 6000, but given the choice, I still recommend DSLRs for action. In summary, if you are shooting action, the Canon 70D seems to have a better focusing system, but you could save a few bucks and get a used Canon 7D. They're both really pretty big, heavy cameras. If you want something small and light for travel, definitely check out the Sony Alpha 6000. It has perfect image quality, just like the D5500 and a much smaller package. The lenses can be a little bit smaller too. For just about everything else, the D5500 is the best camera for under a grand. It's small, lightweight, has a very capable focusing system, and that touchscreen makes it just fun to use. But you could save yourself 400 bucks and go for the Nikon D3300. With that 400 bucks, you could buy yourself a Yongno YN 568 flash. You could buy yourself a remote shutter release to start doing night photography. You could buy a tripod. You'll need that for night photography too. You could even pick up a uh, Nikon 50mm F1.8G, you want the AFS model. You know what, you could even set aside a few bucks and educate yourself, learn a little bit about the art and science of photography with my book, Stunning Digital Photography. Learn how to make your pictures look great in post-processing with Adobe Lightroom using my Lightroom 5 book. Or learn how to save yourself some bucks buying used, picking the right lenses for the job, 
but with my photography buying guide. All those available at sdp.io slash store. A little education and some extra gear will make more of a difference than an incremental step up in the Nikon product line. If you like this video, please click like, share with your friends, and subscribe to see more free videos. Thanks so much.